Hello, everybody. Today, we are going to learn how to edit our game save on Final Fantasy X for PC. Really easy. So, I have everything we need here. Um, and at GameRebel.net, you can find uh, all the links to everything. Also, have some links in the description below the video, too, if you don't want to go that far. So, what we need to do is download some programs here. Really easy. We want to download uh, FFX Ed for editor. There's a link for that. Uh, we need a uh, hexadecimal editor. Um, HXD dot is a, a pretty good one. And memory sum checker. That's all you need. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to find our save file uh, located in uh, your documents for Final Fantasy X. Take your save file and we have to uh, run it in our uh, hexadecimal editor and remove some values then save it with those removed values and then we could actually run it in our save editor and then uh, you change all the settings that you want give yourself whatever you want then you save it and then you run it, run it through the memory sum checker which adds those values that you deleted which makes it compatible with Final Fantasy X on PC. If you don't remove these values, the editor will not edit the save file. And if you don't put the values back, it won't, the game won't run your save file. So we have to do th these things on a step-by-step -step basis to be able to do it. It's actually pretty easy. I'm just going to go ahead and show you. So the first thing we do is we go to, uh, we need our hex editor, hxd.exe. We open this up and we're going to find I think the backup file is what we want. And we go all the way down. I'm going to just scroll all the way down to the bottom. And we're going to locate 000064F0. Okay? It's all in numerical order. It, the fastest way is to go all the way from the bottom uh, and scroll up until you start seeing some values right here. Right? And quick way is you go uh, to column 8 and go all the way down to row 000064F0 and we're going to highlight all the way down to the bottom all these zero values it's just junk values you don't need them okay then we're going to right click we're going to hit select block hit OK and then hit delete hit OK and then you're going to save alright now uh, once you've done that, you're pretty good, okay? And as always, and I probably should have mentioned this before, make sure you do a backup of your save. Uh, it goes kind of without saying when we're editing saves here. Now uh, now that that's done, see we took those values out, that's it. Now we can actually run that file in our FF, Final Fantasy editor, Final Fantasy X editor. We're going to open it up. We're going to load file. I'm going to go to my desktop. I edited my backup. Um, my file's already edited. I'm ready to go. But here's a fresh one. We're going to load it. And here we go. Now I'm going to run you guys through some of the menus here. Um, uh, I can't move it around. Okay. So we can uh, go to the character area. Okay. And then you select your character. I'm going to start off with Titus. All right. And then um, Titus. Uh, you can choose what type of overdrive mode you want. Here's overdrive modes. One, a quick way to do everything is you can hit max all stats for all characters, get all abilities, all overdrives, all overdrive modes, um, and you can even remove them from your party as well. But I like to edit things person by person, just so I'm not super overpowered, so there's still a little bit of a challenge in the game, a little bit of challenge with bosses and stuff like that. But when you're fighting general monsters, it's just, it, it, you know, it goes a lot faster. Um, all right. So we're on Titus, and uh, we could change his HP and his base HP. All right, and uh, we can change his strength, his base magic, base agility, base evasion. You know how fast you are uh, with evading attacks. Sphere level, um, value out of value, overdrive gauge. Uh, you can edit the amount of damage you do with poison attacks. Um, You can edit uh, magic power, 
or magic points, base magic points, base defense, uh, base magic defense, base luck, base accuracy, ability points. You can change the amount of enemies you've defeated and your affection. Um, all this stuff, you can do it character by character. And what's really cool is you can even do it for Seymour. You could put Seymour in your uh, party, but you can only have one character in your party at a time. And uh, so you could either have Seymour, or you can even put uh, a uh, uh, an Aeon in your party, which is pretty cool. So, and then when you have like an Aeon, for example, let's put Bahama in there. We could. Uh, edit all these same values, because now he's a character in your party, which is pretty cool. And it's separate from him being an Aeon, which is pretty cool. So uh, there's that. All right, so you can do that for each character, even the Aeons and Seymour. Um, you could choose which abilities are, uh, you know, you want your character to have. I would just probably pick all of them if I'm close to the end of the game. Just give them all to yourself. If you're closer to the beginning of the game, it might not be so fun to do that, so hold back a little bit. Um, pretty cool stuff. Alright, so don't come up here. The next thing that we want to do is uh, when you're done, you hit edit. Don't come up here. Sorry, somebody's trying to come up in the middle of my tutorial video. So we hit done every time you're done, and now we can edit our equipment. Pretty neat. Um, so what we do here is uh, uh, edit. No, 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 what's going on here? Um... Oh yeah, we select an empty slot. So I'm going to select. Uh, here we go. I don't have very many left, but I'm going to select slot 169. All right, and now this is going to edit which weapon goes to that slot and who it's going to go to. So we're going to we're going to say we're going to give it to Titus, right? And then we're going to give it a name. Um, I don't think we could type a name, so we just kind of we choose a name we want to give it. Let's call it Brotherhood. All right, and then we could choose the appearance of what that item is. Basically, the skin. Let's uh, let's make it a uh, a staff, just for the hell of it, you know. So we can uh, or Jack Sword. Hey, that's cool. Jack Sword. Here we go. Um, we can equip it to Titus, and then we're gonna say it's a weapon, not armor. And then we choose the damage formula. Pretty neat. Um, so there's all these options here. You know, you could choose something. You could be really up. You could say multiples of 9999. And then you could choose the attack power. You know, you could put 99, critical hit 99. Um, you could put your auto ability capacity at 4. And then you could choose the auto abilities, which is pretty neat. So you have all these to choose from. And you can even choose, choose armor abilities, I believe, to put it on here. Which is pretty neat. So there's that, and then you just once you select everything, we'll just randomly select some stuff. Um, there. Okay, so we have some random things. I wouldn't really pick that, but uh, there we go. And then you hit uh, done, and then now you have that piece of equipment. One sixty nine Brotherhood. There it is. Titus has that weapon now. now it's, and you could do that for any of your characters. So we can do 170 and say, hey, I want to do, I want to make a, uh, I want a weapon for Bahamut. And you can make Bahamut his own weapon. Um, pretty neat. Or any of your other characters. And uh, so you can edit your weapons and their setup. Uh, you can make some pretty powerful weapons. Penance is like just done. There's, there's no way, if you could just make it where you could just add penance in one hit. It's kind of ridiculous. All right, so um, let's cancel that out. Uh, you can even do your items. So first thing is it starts off with key items. You can give yourself any key item that you like. Um, you know, 
know, one of the ones that's pretty obvious to give yourself is all the LBED primers. That's pretty cool. Um, you know, so if you don't want to, like, say you don't want to do the 200 lightning dodges, you can go ahead and give yourself Lulu Sigil. Done. No more lightning dodges. You know, you don't want to do the uh, uh, Chocobo race, no Chocobo race. Done. You're out of there. You know, you just give yourself that item. All right, next thing is Sphere Grid. This one's kind of uh, self-explanatory, but kind of all is, but we're going to run through it. We could choose the grid position per character, and each position has a numerical value. I don't know what those numerical values are yet, but I'm sure someone will make a map at some point. Um, but you could just give yourself teleport spheres or warp spheres in the items. Um, back here we go to items, and uh, you could select a slot just like your weapons. You know, let's do slot uh, 46, and then you can give yourself... Um, going to be, you just select the item that you want here. Um, there we go, Warp Sphere. So you can give yourself 99 of them. So it doesn't even matter. You just use a Warp Sphere. You go anywhere you want on the, on the Sphere Grid. So the Sphere Grid is kind of useless with that in mind. However, if you want to uh, just max everything out, you can do that here. You can activate uh, the complete Sphere Grid, max Sphere Grid, uh, right there. Just maximize all, everything. You can even scramble it if you want to. You can kind of randomize your sphere grid, which is kind of fun. Um, Blitzball. You can edit everything about Blitzball. You have, uh, you can choose your, your character, even characters you don't have, and you can edit all their stats. Um, everything. You can give them techniques, uh, like Jack's Shot 2, you know, that's kind of cool. Um, all this different stuff, if you're a Blitzball guy, I hate Blitzball. And then you can also edit which mini, mini games you've completed. So you can just kind of make that an official thing in the game. Um, for Lightning Dodge, Chocobo Training, Cactor Village, Side Quest, all that stuff. It's like the worst mini games ever. So it's kind of kind of cool to just be able to bypass that. And then there, of course, there's Miscellaneous. So from here, you can edit how much gill you have, how much game time you have, the amount of battles you've fought, how much money you've donated to Awaka, for those prices, um, overdrive counts. You can uh, edit your Yoshimbo compatibility um, and even your game coordinates. Again, these are values that I don't really know. I, somebody might make a map to these at some point. It says, you, you know, just put in this sequence and it'll put you in this particular place in the game. But I don't really know what those are. So I'm just kind of leaving that alone. And again, it's really, this game is really short if you, uh, especially when you're using this save editor, you can just fly through the game and you get anywhere you want pretty quickly. Um, and you can change some of the different variations of things that happen in the game, like Gata dies. Uh, oh, and you can even give Riku her shitty-looking wetsuit uh, in battle. So when you're in a, a battle, Riku's wearing that Albed suit that she wears at the beginning of the game, which is, which is kind of cool. Um, it doesn't look as cool as uh, uh, her normal outfit, but whatever. It's something different. I have it activated. And um, you can even uh, check which... Uh, bosses you've defeated, and um, you can uh, just automatically capture all the monsters if you don't want to capture all the monsters, unlock all airship destinations, get all the theater spheres, theater spheres, that's pretty cool, because you can just watch whatever movie you want, um, yeah, so that's kind of the run through with all this stuff, um, when you're done, you just hit uh, done, and then you hit save, right there, bam, you save it, I'm going to go ahead and save. There we go, it is saved, and now we have to run our final program. Here we go, it's the memory sum checker. Now, it is in Japanese, but that's okay, because all you have to do is hit Control o locate the file you want to edit. Uh, we're going to do this one. And then you just hit this play button. That's it. Make sure that your save file is in the Final Fantasy X save file location. I just edit right within the folder, so I don't have to move it around. And then you run the game, and you're good to go. Um, that's all for today, everybody. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned a little bit of uh, how to use this stuff. And enjoy playing Final Fantasy X the easy way.